Hey guys, it's Sean with Nolts Power Equipment and in today's video, we're gonna take a special look at the financing process when it comes to buying a tractor. I have our representative from DLL who we're going to have a quick Zoom call with so that we can talk about some of the back end processes. Whenever you see a sticker that says this tractor is $305 a month, what does that process look like? Where do you send your credit application to? How does that get processed on the back end? What about whenever my payment is due? How do I log in? All of those questions we will answer today. So let's take a look. So guys, I have Miss Stephanie on with us today. I say Miss Stephanie because Stephanie, I've heard your last name in a number of different uh, places before, but for the life of me, I can't remember how it's pronounced. Help me out with your last name. DeBoer. DeBoer. All right. So so Stephanie DeBoer is our uh, rep with DLL Finance, who we use for financing our Coyote equipment. Um, and I have a couple questions for you, Stephanie. I appreciate you getting on here and doing this interview, so to speak, with me. I have a list of questions here that uh, I put together that are, honestly, they're questions that we have on our end as the dealer as well, plus okay. some questions that we've gotten from uh, our customers. So there's a lot of this stuff that we don't even understand ourselves as the dealer as far as how it works on the back end. So looking forward to getting some more insight into that. So let's start off real quick, if you don't mind. Who or what is DLL? DLL is a wholly owned subsidiary of the Rabobank Group, which is based in the Netherlands. Okay. We are a global organization in about 30 countries. We are a leading vendor finance partner and we deliver sustainable, <clears throat> excuse me, um, sustainable solutions for complete asset life cycle, which means we're helping with the dealer financing portion for them to have the equipment on their lots through to the customer financing and then any used equipment that the dealers take in. We help mm -hmm. with that as well. Um, we work with equipment manufacturers, dealers, and distributors to support their distribution channels and grow their business. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but DLL has divisions in food, ag, healthcare, clean technology, construction, transportation, industrial, office equipment, and technology. So we have our a far pretty far reach. In That's what a lot of finance. stuff. <laughs> yeah. From from tractors to medical equipment. Yeah. Yep. And, and windmills. <laughs> yeah, and windmills. So what is your what is your title and what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis with DLL? I am a senior retail account manager. And there's some, there's, you have some initials in your uh, email signature as well. C was it C CLFP. What, what does, uh, I'm not quite fancy enough to have initials in my email signature <laughs> yet, but what, what does that all that mean? About a year and a half ago, I was certified as a certified lease and finance professional. Okay. And the, that is a North American or at least United States organization. Right now, there's about 300 members across the country. Okay. So what do you, okay. so I know that we, unfortunately, half the time that we communicate with you is when we've messed something up and we have a problem that you need us to fix. Aside from that, what, what does your role entail? I, other than fixing things, I <laughs> answer questions for dealers and end user customers. Like, do you have a pre-payoff pre penalty do you um what's your insurance cover um can i do this for a payment schedule rather than this for a payment schedule so it's just working with each customer individually and dealership to get what they need and get it mm -hmm. figured out how to do it so the the point of this video is to kind of go through some of the back end of of how the world of equipment financing works so that's kind of a broad question, but I guess that is the question. Uh, how does equipment financing work? Um, so I know on our end, so we'll we'll meet with a customer. We'll talk about which machine works best for them. If they decide they want to go ahead and do that, we'll fill out a pre-approval application. Um, and then from that point, we either get a denial or an approval from DLL. Uh, and from that point, we put in serial numbers. We hit a couple nexts, and then that's our, we're hands off with that. 
So from your side, what does the equipment financing process look like for the customer? For the customer, <clears throat> it is after they pick out their equipment, it is always the fill out the credit application, either the paper application or the digital customer initiated credit application that can get the customers pre-approved. Once we get that credit application back from the dealership, along with what equipment they're wanting to purchase, then the dealership or NOLTS gets a contract for the customer to sign. And they can either do that electronically or they can do ink and paper, whichever they prefer. Once they get the contract signed and back to us, we have a processing team who goes through the documents make sure that everything is in line, that we have a copy of the driver's license, that we have insurance information, that the address on the license matches what's on the contract. Um, signatures are in the right spots. We have serial numbers. They're just doing the final paperwork check. And then once they get everything done, then they hit fund and we send the funds off to the dealership. Does um, with DLL does is there somebody at a desk somewhere viewing every application that comes in? Is it automated? Um, what does that process look like? We have a team of four underwriters that we call our flow underwriters, and they are looking at our small dollar transactions or smaller dollar transactions like these. Mm -hmm. They everything that is submitted from the dealership goes through our automated system first. 85% are being either approved or declined with that auto system. So it is computer generated. Once that is done, if something, and that takes about 30 seconds to get an approval or a okay. decline. Mm -hmm. So it's really quick. Once, if something is input incorrectly, say a, um, a model number, the dealership had to override a model number or they didn't like the rate that was populating. So they overrode the rate. Um, anything odd like that, it's going to kick it out and an underwriter will have to look at it. And they mm -hmm. are available six days a week mm -hmm. to make underwriting decisions. So you mentioned the funding process. Um, so again, we we kind of get our end of that with um, with with our secretaries when they get their funding notices. Um, and I had done another video a little while back with insurance. Um, I talked about insurance. I kind of talked about um, transfers of liability and who technically owns the piece of equipment. And um, so, okay, so Nolts, if we have a tractor that's here on floor plan, that means we've essentially borrowed money from DLL in order to have it here. Then if a customer buys that from us, then they're borrowing money from DLL. So there's kind of that weird, who owns the tractor? So let's say somebody comes in and they finance a tractor. Who owns that? Uh, they, they're going to go home and say, tell their buddies that they, they just bought a tractor and they own a tractor. How does that do. process work as far as, as far as who has the, the liability on it and, and that sort of deal? And on a retail contract situation, the customer does own the equipment. Mm -hmm. We are just lending them the money for it. Okay. Do and put you a are, lien ahead, on the equipment. Yeah. We do put a lien on the equipment. And it's specifically on just that equipment. It does not include a full property lien or a mortgage like you would have for your house. It's specific to that equipment. If you were to do a lease, on the other hand, which DLL does a lot of leasing around the world, then DLL is considered the owner on that. And then the customer is basically renting the equipment from us. So that we are responsible for the property taxes, we're responsible for any sales tax. That that's kind of the the main differences between a lease and a contract. So obviously, financing that means credit. Credit's going to come into play a lot. Um, and some of these questions are so like, is there a minimum credit score? I know that there's maybe some. Um, I don't know that, there, that you can give me a hard fast number. I don't know if you can or not. So that's uh, there's a question that we're not sure of. Is there a minimum credit score? to work with DLL? We do not have a minimum credit score. Mm -hmm. The FICO scores that the credit bureaus and most lending institutions use to make their decisions, that is just one factor in the DLL scorecard because we have our own internal scorecard. So, and it's been a long time since so I've seen one of our scorecards, but let's say there's 20 factors to it. 
that FICO mm-hmm. score is one out of 20 factors okay. that we're looking at. So I know with with our with with our experience, some of those credit scores, we'll get a notification back asking for some sort of cosigner or other way to make that happen. What what are if you are somebody who's who's trying to repair your credit or somebody with a lower credit score trying to get back on your feet, what are some that doesn't necessarily mean you're out of the game. What are some options that that DLL how does that work if if something comes back that you, you are looking for something additional besides just their credit history? If we were to go a cosigner route, a cosigner gives us someone else's payment history to work off of. And cosigners mm-hmm. are really good for when you have someone who has no credit or very little credit or someone who is trying to rebuild. Mm-hmm. And then it gives us, instead of just the one person responsible for the payments, it then gives us two or three or however many are on the contract. Mm-hmm. If you were to co-sign on a loan and the customer, the original customer that's purchasing it does not go default, nothing happens to you at all, ever. Mm-hmm. If that person goes default, though, then because you co-signed, we can come to you and ask you to pay on that contract mm-hmm. and does make that, it current. In that situation, would that negatively affect the co-signer's credit in addition to the the, the main signer? Yes, it does. Okay. So so co-signing is, is you still have to be careful if you're looking, if somebody yes. comes to you and says, hey, can you co-sign on this? Um, yeah. There's there's definitely some things at play there. With with finance, so with that pre-approval application, is that a, uh, I guess maybe I shouldn't assume that folks know the difference between a hard pool and a soft pool on their credit. Um, can you maybe expound a little bit on what those differences are? And is that pre-approval application, is that a hard pool or a soft pool on their credit? A soft pull is basically going to be what's done by a credit card company. And there are no negative impacts on your credit bureau for showing that. The credit card companies do that to see, okay, does this person meet my minimum score that I need to offer this credit card at this interest rate or whatever Mm -hmm. that is, or for a certain dollar amount. That is considered a soft pull, does not show on your credit. But when you get to places like where you're applying for, say, an auto loan or a tractor loan or a mortgage or something like that, those are going to be hard pulls. And those will show on your credit bureau. A soft pull does not allow that company to see if there's any derogatory information or really if there's any positive information on your credit bureau, where a hard pull gives them gives us access to the credit bureau itself so we can see what is on the bureau. Mm-hmm. Rather, just a score, and and that comes into play a little bit where we'll have some folks, um, you know, they've stopped at John Deere, they've stopped at Kubota, they stopped at New Holland. Now they're stopping to t- to look at a Coyote. You do have to be careful that you're not doing credit applications at all of those places, um, because okay, so if you start out at Kubota and you do a credit application at all of those places, till you get to Coyote, your credit score could have dropped based on all of those applications. And what does that what does that kind of communicate to a lender? Um, if you, if you, when you get that credit report, you see a whole bunch of credit pools within a, a few weeks or a few days worth of, of time. It's usually a red flag because mm-hmm. that says somebody, well, they didn't like what they got there. So let's go to New Holland, see what they've got. Well, I didn't like what they had to offer. So let's go somewhere else and see what they've got to offer. They, it, because with each credit pull, it's pulling down your score five to 10 points each time. So if you go four or five different places, you're going to hurt your credit score. You're going to go, you could easily go from a 840 down to a mid 700s just with going shopping. Without ever actually signing any paperwork. Without ever signing anything but a credit application. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm I'm going off script a little bit. Plus I'm realizing that I have no idea which way to look because my camera's up here, but you're over here. So if you're watching <laughs> the video, forgive my my eye movement. But um so with a customer comes in, they've done the pre-approval application, we've submitted everything on our end um for for the contract. DLL has gotten everything back. We've put serial numbers on, everything is signed. Well, let's let's ask again. I'm going off script a little bit. Let's talk about that. With signing documents, how does how does DLL handle signatures for documents? Uh, we use we use DocuSign a ton, um, and maybe 
deeper into that question a little bit because we one of the selling points that we have is that you can do all of this on your phone. What is DLL's kind of stance on that? Easily being able to access access these documents, sign documents. What's what's kind of DLL's mindset there? We are really pushing to go to the digital route between the credit application, customer signing documents, everything. With the DocuSign, we're able to put in a security feature where each customer has to answer questions so that we know it is them and -hmm. it's questions coming out of their credit bureau. So they have to be able to, it can't be somebody who's a scammer who's picked up their information and be able to answer the questions off their credit bureau because they most likely don't have all the information off the credit bureau, Mm -hmm. like a, a previous address or a previous job position or something like that. So we really prefer the digital route just because it is more secure. Um, so speaking of security, somebody has gone through the process of of giving uh, credit information for an application. You then you then call me as the dealer representative and you rattle off everything on their credit report, correct? Or what is what's the what are the rules and regulations there? What what do what do we as the dealer then find out about that person's credit history? I am not allowed because of privacy laws. We are not allowed to give out the specific score. And we are not allowed to give out anything specific mm-hmm. on a credit bureau. So let's say like a, an American Express card is past due or the mortgage at the, the bank down the street is past due. We cannot give out that. We can give you things like poor payment history, charge offs and collections, a bankruptcy, but we cannot get it into specifics. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty much standard across pretty much every financing company out there, right? And the reason I ask that question is if if you go to a dealership and you have applied for credit and you're asking them, well, I thought I had this, why can't you, you know, when they come back with, well, unfortunately, I don't have any answers for you. That's not them being shady. That's the genuine truth. They they don't, they can't they know. They can't know. Um, but in those situations, you guys, you guys are, I, I believe from some of my experience, you're required to send some documentation explaining why they were, denied or how does that, how can they get in contact to find that information out if they need to? We cannot talk to the customer about anything on their credit bureau because we cannot verify who we are talking to. We can talk to the dealership about what's showing on the credit bureau and that those generalizations, Mm -hmm. but we, because we have a legal contract in place between each dealer and us. As far as the customer's like I said, we cannot give them any specific specific information. What we do send them is an adverse action letter mm-hmm. that is sent out approximately 20 to 30 days after the application was approved or declined. And that will give them the reasons. Um, the federal government gives us a, a list and we can put check marks in the box for what the reasons are. And then at the bottom, it gives the customer which credit bureau that we pulled so that they they know which one to go talk to if they've got any problems how and, does and so like i have a i have a discover card and you constantly see the commercials for check your fico credit score what where does ev- almost everybody out there has heard the term fico credit score and i've had it happen already where i'll go in to finance a car or some something that i've financed with the information in the back of my head that my fico score is this and then they tell me that transunion says it's this and it's completely different um, can you speak to that at all? What, what some of that is about? Different lending institutions will have different types of scores. If you were to pull up a transunion score, it's going to give you what your overall FICO score is. And then it's going to give you like a level one, level two, level three. Now, I don't know what specifically each of those is, but each mm-hmm. of those can be a different score. Mm-hmm. So it all depends on which score they're actually pulling. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's, I guess let's step away from some of the credit questions now, because the, the person watching this video wants to know how the process works for financing their tractor. So again, you've come in, you've picked the tractor with one of our sales guys. Um, you have submitted a pre-approval application. Um, on, so on our end, I guess I should have spoken about that a little bit earlier on our end. Um, so you put on your, you put your email in on that pre-approval application. And then as a dealer, 
depending on, so the link that we send you for that application is linked specifically to us. Yes. So with that instant approval um, or instant decision of some sort, you get an email at about the same time that we get an email mm-hmm. that tells us, tells us the decision. Um, and I guess I'm taking a couple of steps back, but um, you oftentimes will get, so a CS 25 or yeah, CS 25, 20, let's say um, the cost of that, you know, you're in that, lower to mid 20,000 range, but you get a pre-approval notification saying that you were pre-approved for $50,000. And we get a call, hey, what in the world did you pull a credit application for $50,000 for me for? I just want to buy a $22,000 tractor. How does that process work with the pre-approvals and the amounts that uh, the people get pre-approved for? When the customer is inputting their information to get that credit approval done, they have a toggle where they can switch between how much money they want Mm -hmm. to get approved for. So we are not looking at, okay, well, they're good. Let's give them 50 or they're good. Let's give them 75. We're going by what they chose Mm -hmm. for a a dollar amount. And that doesn't, that that doesn't mean that that's what they're going to be borrowing. No, it just means what they're, it's kind of like when you apply for a mortgage, you can get a pre-approved for a $400,000 house, even though you know that your budget's only going to let you buy a $200,000 house. Yep. So when does, when does that amount then show up on their credit report as far as, so I got pre-approved for 50, the tractor I bought is 22,000. When does TransUnion find that out? Not until after we have funded the documents and the customer Mm -hmm. started making payments. Okay. But actually report to the credit bureau. Cool. Okay. So, We've gotten pre-approved. We've sent the contract through on our end to get everything going and we're funded. Now what? What does this is the part that we as a dealership honestly have some questions about because we get this we get these questions. Um, and I've never financed a tractor myself. So what does that process look like from the customer standpoint after Noltz has dropped the tractor off and they've pulled out of the driveway with their truck and trailer and they say, Hey, DL will be in touch with you. What what happens there? So let's say we got the contract in this afternoon. We got it funded. It then goes to a um, printer and they will, depending on if you chose to have our insurance or not, Mm -hmm. it will send you a, a welcome to DLL letter. It will send you the automatic withdrawal form again. If, and if you filled it out, when you did the contract and you got it again, don't worry about it. Mm-hmm. It's probably okay. Um, and then a copy of the insurance policy, if they get the insurance through us, mm-hmm. then it is also telling them where they need to go on our website to set up access, to get access to their account. If there's any issues Then they can call our customer service group and customer service is good with helping get the access set up. They're good with getting the automatic payments set up if you need it. Um, A payment coupon book is not sent. What we mail is a monthly invoice and we only mail a monthly invoice when there is a payment due. So let's say your payment is $150 that you send us $300. It's going to be paid a month ahead. Mm -hmm. So your payment, you're not going to get an invoice the next month because there's no payment due. Mm -hmm. And if you were also to set up automatic withdrawal, which is great, wonderful, but you send us a payment for $500 and it pays your account ahead, we can't keep pulling what's due for your monthly payment because we can't pull what's not due Mm -hmm. because nothing's due. Mm -hmm. So that's that's an interesting... That's an interesting idea. And I don't even think we knew that at Nolts until we actually had somebody here recently ask that question. Um, so say your say your monthly payment is three hundred dollars and you make a twelve hundred dollar payment, DLL will push out your next payment for well, that math would be four months. Yes. Um, so f- so we have some in the situation where this happened, we had a gentleman who he got paid quarterly, so he got one lump sum and he wanted to make a large payment at a time, but he didn't want to have a payment due again in, in a month. Um, so that, that's a great feature with DLL talk, uh, speaking of, of features with payments, prepayment penalties or or anything like that with DLL. We do have a prepayment penalty. It is only on our ag use or commercial use contracts. And Mm -hmm. it is a whole whopping $100. So if you figure out the percentage of that $100 to your total loan, it's pretty minimal. Yeah. Yeah. 
On a um, consumer use contract, we could not charge that. Okay. So somebody somebody could pay pay their, their loan off early and it's it's not a not a problem at all. No. One last question that I thought of that I did not send you, forgive me, I'm sorry, um, is we have people ask the question all the time because we advertise like crazy Coyote's current 0% financing yeah. offers. And we get this question all the time. Well, that's not a true 0%. You guys, you know, what what goes into a question like that is, is that a true 0% or how does how does Coyote get to the point where they can offer, you know, the standard rate right now is 8.2 something. How do we get from that to being able to offer zero percent for 84 months on some of these tractors on something like that coyote is either giving you the cash discount and the standard rate or Mm -hmm. no cash discount and the low rates Mm -hmm. so coyote is using that cash discount to help pay for a buy down to zero percent so i'm just going to pull a number here let's say a um account has we're charging Coyote $5,000 to pay for that interest up front to mm-hmm. us. If the rebate was $3,000 for the tractor and loader, then Coyote is paying out of pocket $2,000 mm-hmm. to cover and, that. And that doesn't necessarily mean that we as the dealer are then charging you an extra $2,000. In it, most of in every situation as it's set up right now, that's just a deal that Coyote has worked up with DLL. That's all on the back end. We have nothing to do with that. Nope. Um, so that's that's where it, that's where it comes into play to to work with some of these brands, some of these finance companies that have those relationships that can offer that that kind of that kind of service. Um, yeah, Stephanie, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. You're um, of course, Zoom is going to kick me off because I don't have the pro version here shortly. So we'll wrap it up. But um, from my experience over the last couple of years, Stephanie is fantastic to work with. We love her. DLL has been great to work with. Our customers love it. Stephanie, do you have any last minute thoughts, questions, anything else that you wanted to share before we before we call it a call it a day? You no, know, I think you pretty much covered it all. And I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to do this with for you. Yeah, absolutely. We appreciate your time. Thanks for coming on, guys. Thanks for watching. Hopefully, we answered some questions that you might have about how the financing process works. Um, it's such a it's it's definitely a uh, an element of the tractor buying business that doesn't get talked about much, to my knowledge. I think Stephanie, we might be pulling off the first one of these videos that I've seen. So maybe that'll make us famous. I don't know, but we can hope. Yep, or not. Stephanie, Stephanie, thank you so much for your time. I'm sure we will keep in, we'll we'll talk again soon as we keep selling tractors. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot, Stephanie.